Further complicating this picture, it turns out that Crowley has actually been teaching a racial profiling class since 2004. Sergeant Crowley, the instructor of a, I'm sorry, he is the instructor of a 12-hour course at the Lowell Police Academy, he instructs about 60 cadets a year. So what is being taught in the classes? Joining us to talk about it is Richard Weinblatt, the director of the Institute of Public Safety at Central Ohio Technical College. He's also former police chief. Thank you so much for joining joining us, Richard. It's nice to be back on NBC again. How are you doing? Good. So let's set it up here. I mean, we hear about uh, officers from all across the country, particularly major cities, who get these sensitivity training and uh, also uh, trained in how to avoid racial profiling. What's a class like? Well, what they're trying to do there, and, and, and I've done this myself as, as an instructor, is we're trying to get folks who've had their, their view of the world to see what other people's views of the world are, because uh, perception is reality, as we all know, and we're trying to get a sense of what other people's perceptions are. But how so do you do that? So that even though we may not agree, well, by, by engaging in dialogue in the class, because a lot of times when you're in these police academy classes, this is the first time that some of these folks, particularly young folks who may not have been in the military like in previous generations, are put in a room with folks that are maybe not the same age as them, maybe not the same gender as them, maybe not the same race as them, not the same socioeconomic class as them. They start to see some different viewpoints. And then, of course, the instructor's job is to magnify that even more. Uh, sometimes bring in guest speakers that help to bring in other points of view, whether it be uh, gay or whether it be black or whether it be purple, whatever, other folks that feel in their world that they're being disenfranchised. Let me ask you this. Um, a lot of people have thrown around uh, words like racist and bigoted. Um, in, in something mm -hmm. like a, a case where an officer, and not certainly this officer, but in a case where an officer uh, might be accused or even uh, proven to have racial profiling, do you have to be a racist to racially profile? And I say that because many people are, are raised to, to hear prejudices. That doesn't mean you are a card-carrying Klan member, but you may have a perception. Right. You might clutch your handbag when you you see a black teenager uh, and not be a racist but have a stereotype in your mind. I, well, I think what's important is incumbent upon us as professionals in law enforcement to be able to understand other people's perceptions and, and basically bend over backwards to try to defeat that while not sacrificing officer safety. Uh, you know, in this situation, I have no information or reason to believe that Sergeant Crowley is a racist. Um, I read his actual police report, and, and where I differ a little bit is once he established that he was a lawful occupant there, Professor Gates, it's over. You leave. If he's agitated, you just leave. I've had people yell at me at calls as a full-time law enforcement officer, and I just left. But the problem is, is getting officers to understand that, to see where Professor Gates may have come up with this perception, and while we may not agree with it, to empathize with it and to be able to understand it. Richard, you, you hit uh, something I was just going to ask about, and as we, I think we all have the right, at least I think, to be angry at a police officer, even to sort of say we're angry Absolutely. at a police officer. Uh, and here's the, here's the thing, we, we've talked about conflicts between Officer uh, Crowley and Mr. Gates, and obviously there are going to be differences in how they perceive things, but there are also differences in these police reports between Officer Crowley and Officer Figueroa, who was on the scene. For example, at one point, Officer Crowley tells Gates, I'm investigating a break-in, and according to Crowley, Gates says, why? Because I'm a black man in America. Officer Figueroa heard it differently and heard Gates say, this is what happens to black men in America. Obviously, one of them is a little bit more confrontational than the other. As a former police chief, what do you make of that discrepancy in the police reports? Actually, uh, because it is not exactly the same, it has a little more credibility. If it was exactly the same phrase, all right, I would start to wonder, and you see this in, in courtroom situations too, was there some uh, coercion and talking, uh, co coercion, cooperation and talking together amongst the officers? But no, it appears the way it's phrased that it's two officers that very independently and very credibly put that together. That is not to say that their perceptions of how this went down, you know, are not the same as uh, Professor Gates. Obviously, it's different, but that's okay. And part of our job as professional officers, whether we're black officers, white officers, whatever, is to be trained to rise above the fray, to cooler heads prevail, 
all right, and to understand where the other person is coming from. And that's a big part of what we try to do in the training, is to try to get that mm. thought apart across so that we empathize with the people in the community that we're a part of. Well, Richard Weinblatt, you've been an incredible guest, uh, very knowledgeable, and thank you for sharing the information you've been able to teach to other officers. Thank you so much. And Thank David, you. still ahead, the political dimensions of the gay arrest, and I love that perception is reality line that he just said. That is very Absolutely. telling across the board. Phenomenal guest.